Hey guys, welcome to set five from the North American team battles of the second set. So it's second set, game five. I believe that is the way I should say this. This is going to be on Neo Sulfid, which I have not seen played in quite some time. It's a very popular map, very well balanced map, uh, kind of a nice balance between macro and everything else. Another, actually, I feel like it's one of the, this and Tau Cross, maybe Ascension will join the ranks, but I think this might be the best three player isometric whatever map. There is. I'd like to hear players' opinions on that. Bottom right hand corner, we have Jayun starting as the blue Protoss. I do believe this is King of the Hill style. Dragon sneaking in. 12 o'clock location as the teal Protoss. This is going to be. Uh, get rid of that. This is going to be PvP. Giving you a look of Neil Silfield in case you're newer to the scene and have not seen it. So you've got kind of. You, it's a rampless map, much like Tau Cross. So you don't. It's almost like green. But anyway, so you got the gap right there. Leaving the natural expansion, a wide natural to try to defend from there. You have another base that you can see is kind of on this high ground. So it's high ground defendable, but it's wide open at the same time, right? Which is kind of, I, I feel like that's an interesting map feature. So map control means a lot. You also have this base into the upper right hand corner, which, and kind of at the opposite corners around them. Oops, that's not the one. There's one over here where uh, they do have kind of like a bridge feature, another wide open area to try to defend. So you can kind of can it up, but it's mineral only. And so basically there's, there does end up being fights across the other expansions. Um, but I feel like because of the nature of it difficult to take third and difficult to def defend third and just kind of the nature, it makes interesting games is what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, both players scooting across. It looks like Jayun saw that probe scout and Dragon did not. So he's going to readjust and not even bother scouting that bottom left-hand corner. Gateway first opener here, gateway first opener here. We do have an assimilator up. For both players, the simulator's up a little bit earlier for Jayun. Cybernetics core warping in, no zealot being warped in for either player. And a, basically mirror builds, but the big advantage here, close to mirror builds, the big advantage here is that Jayun's going to be able to sneak in with this probe and go ahead and see everything that's happening. Get a good look at the pylon count overall. Dragon, well, I guess Dragon's going to be able to do it as well. It's just going to be a little bit later. First cell being produced from Dragon, first variance in this build. And being forced to... And I think that might be the thing that... We'll see if that ends up being a big differentiating fader, a factor in the mid-game. Manor Pylon from Jayun. Zealot being forced to go ahead and build that. Are we going to see a counter Manor Pylon? It looks like Dragon's just trying to harass the probe line and do some damage there. Dragoon is on the way. Pylon canceled, but did a bit of disruption, a bit of harassment. It's going to go ahead and back off. Dragoon being produced, range being upgraded as well for both players. So Jayun up, was up like a, a few handful of minerals, but I'm not sure if he got his money's worth out of that manor pylon in the line. You know what it would be, I wonder how you would even calculate that as like a field. To be able to say like this many resources lost. Probe Scout trying to stay alive as long as possible, but it is going to get pinned to the corner and explode gloriously. Two gate for Dragon, which I feel like two gate, three gate play, a little bit more popular on this map. But Jayun actually setting up, because it's rampless, but Jayun actually setting up to go ahead and grab a Nexus at his natural expansion. Interesting. So we'll see if he goes one gate Nexus Robo into uh, Reaver to try to defend this. What this does do, let's see if Dragon pushes forward and scouts this. This will give Dragon in about two minutes a superior attack force. And keep in mind, no ramp to try to defend. And it looks like, yeah, there's a robotics facility. The question is, is timing on when Dragon decides to move out. Because now he's got four Dragoons, essentially. He's got he's going to have four Dragoons versus essentially three that'll be on the front, and then he could reinforce if he just pushes into this. But the longer this goes on, and he is starting to move out now, I think the probe scouted it. Jayun's going to need... Let's see if this even causes a cancel. Yeah, cancel on the Nexus. Oof. So Jayun, scout, Jayun scouts the two Nexus plate, has a cancellation, he's got the shield battery up, Dragon's still going to have... So that puts Dragon way ahead. 
Because that's minerals lost, I believe. That's a lot of minerals lost in that nexus. And secondarily, he's still got superior dragoons on the ground. Shield battery there. Second gateway being dropped. And superior forces. And just walking in. So Jayun getting a little bit greedy. And paying for it, it looks like. And yeah, Dragon is just going to walk over him. Honestly, I feel like this is a game where Jayun just got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. And I was, I'll be honest, I was surprised to see him drop that Nexus on a, on a different map maybe, but on this particular map I was surprised to see it. Anyway, that closes out this series of the North American team battles. Special thanks to, again, Jayun and Gypsy for getting this. Check out Dragon at DragonBW, Jayun at uh, Jayun on Twitch.tv. More often than not, you'll see me in Jayun's chat hanging out. I say hi. I appreciate it. And hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.